What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. We've got the crispy hoodie on today. Premium ass shit. Y'all can go cop on BDGE.store. It's also where our full waiver wire fab guidance in-depth article will be dropping around noon Eastern time, Western Hemisphere, United States of America. Right now we're doing five running backs that y'all should be adding on the waiver wire if you need help at the position. Okay. This isn't the uh this isn't the premium week to be dropping your fab on running backs. We'll just start off with a little overarching strategy when it comes to the week. It definitely is not the week to be going all in. But nonetheless, there are some players to add because of injury concerns, because of play time, because of depth chart movements. We see a lot of that in the beginning of the year. Before we get into the top five running back waiver wire pickups of thy week, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be doing a few YouTube shorts later today. Those are just minute or fewer videos, less time videos, uh, where we're talking about some dudes I think you can cut for these dudes. Like if you want to make room for them, you need to know who to cut. You need to know all that kind of shit. So subscribe to the channel, but make sure you tuck your shirts in first. Stop yelling. And I'd say let's eat, but motherfucker still got COVID. I can't taste a damn thing. All right, first up on this list, and this is not necessarily in any particular order. I'm kind of just going through the guys. If there are guys that I think you should be dropping your number one waiver wire spot on or should be dropping a lot of, you know, some pretty penny on, uh, I will obviously make that very known. I will be as vocal as I possibly can about it. First guy on this list is Sonny Michelle, Los Angeles Rams. Now, Darrell Henderson is dealing with a rib cartilage issue. Supposedly, it's not that serious. They're pretty optimistic that he'll be able to play next week, but we've seen guys miss time. I believe Cam Akers had it last year with the Rams, actually, and he ended up missing a couple weeks. So this is more of like a pain tolerance issue for Darrell Henderson. Darrell Henderson was the unquestioned fucking hulse in this backfield. All right, He was getting every touch, every snap, every route run by this backfield, and he was looking like he was going to be a fucking <clears throat> absolute snack for the year. Now he's dealing with his rib injury, which is something that both the Rams and fantasy owners were weary of, that can he hold up over these kind of circumstances, getting all the touches and playing all the routes and playing all the snaps and getting all the routes and whatever. And he's proving to us that probably can't, which means Sonny Michel is going to continue to get a bigger and bigger role. Now, once Earl Henderson left, uh, Sonny Michel took over and saw every touch at the running back position on Sunday. Jake Funk saw like three snaps. He played on one passing down. He was asked to pass block on it. So I'm not really worried about Jake Funk. Again, doesn't sound too serious. The problem is if Darrell Henderson does miss this week, they're playing against the Rams, man. Uh, so, I mean, they're playing against the Bucks. They're playing against the Bucks. And if you've ever opened your eyes, you literally know not to play running backs against the Bucks, especially not high end, top tier, outside of the Christian McCaffrey's and that type of player against the Bucks. Okay. 28th in fantasy points allowed to the running back. So I'm not spending much on this backfield, maybe $5 on Michelle. If you're desperate for a little flexi, I think Henderson will be bike sooner rather than later. And again, you just don't want to start a plotter against the Bucks. So Sonny Michelle's on this list. Cordero Patterson of the Falcons, shifty player, nifty player, versatile, been in the league for a hot minute. I tweeted something out today where uh, I was looking back at his game logs and over his previous 35 games, Cordero Patterson had a total of one rushing and or receiving touchdown. On Sunday, he had two. So he had more touchdowns on Sunday than he had in the previous 35 games, non-special team touchdowns. That's the type of player he is, right? He's going to give you these weird, nifty fucking running out, uh, out of the backfield, playing quarterback type games in an offense that barely, that badly, badly needs a spark in the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the interesting part about Cordell Patterson, you might say like the usage is not predictive. If he's only getting eight touches a game, we can't predict him to score touchdowns, et cetera, et cetera. The, the cool thing about a guy like Cordell Patterson is he has running back and wide receiver eligibility on most platforms. And that's what makes him intriguing because a lot of you guys play in three start three wide receiver leagues, right? And you're getting a guy who's getting seven to eight carries a game that you could throw into your wide receiver three slot ahead of dudes like Elijah Moore, or ahead of dudes that are struggling to crack the top 40 wide receivers. <clears throat> you look at the snap rates. He's He's gone 33% of the snaps in both weeks so far. But the opportunities are there. He had 13 opportunities, carries plus targets 
on Sunday's game. He's had seven carries in each of the first two games. And again, I don't expect him to regularly. He's not going to take over Mike Davis as like the early down back and the grinder. But he's going to get a lot of pass catching work. He's running a lot of routes out of the backfield, a lot of like swing routes, wheel routes. Uh, you're starting to get you're starting to see him get more involved in the red zone by the goal line. So while I don't think he's regularly going to score touchdowns, I don't think he's regularly going to put up games like he did on Sunday. They're starting to get him more involved. And if, if you're going to give a guy in your wide receiver three slot eight carries, some of them being in the red zone, some of them being inside the 10 yard line and have him run routes out of the backfield. Like he's probably going to give you a nice floor of eight to nine fantasy points a game with games where he does score a touchdown of 15, 16, 17. Uh, this, this offense also is just like, it's brutal, man. And there's a chance that they just go and become one of the most pass heavy teams in the NFL for the remainder of the season. They're right now, uh, number seven in overall pass rate, right? Pass to run ratio. They've got a nice schedule coming up. You've got the giants, you've got Washington, you've got the New York jets. Um, so a couple, couple smash spots for Cordero Patterson. Again, I'm not spending too much on him. $5. If you, if you want some RB death, uh, uh depth up to eight or ten dollars yeah rb death that's basically what will happen to your rb core if you end up adding patterson to be honest with you but patterson is intriguing had to talk about him one of the more intriguing backs i feel like is not getting talked about enough is kenny gainwell on the eagles uh and y'all could check out these usage stats for yourself to see you know what i'm talking about in terms of like snaps and routes and basically sanders is playing twice as much as kenny gainwell is and that's not a surprise sanders is the better back on this team sanders is the early down guy in this team he's going to continue to get first and second down carries and he should right sanders is a good back but i think it's significant in its own right that kenny gainwell who's a rookie right fifth round pick comes in and commands a significant role immediately and you're starting to hear some rumblings outside that game is going to continue to carve out more and more of a role and he has the third down role for the most part right Gainwell's this guy who who went for 2,000 yards at Memphis in the last time he played back in 2019 excellent excellent receiving back and you're starting to see him carve out the role of the third down back he's basically playing the majority of the third down uh, snaps in this offense and becoming a bigger and bigger part of the pass catching role that is his backfield uh, Boston Scott is not playing at all. And basically the way I see Gainwell is he's very similar to J.D. McKissick, except he's a better runner, right? They both have guys who are bigger bruisers in front of them that are going to get the early down work. Uh, but Gainwell is a better runner than J.D. McKissick is. If something happens to Sanders, Gainwell Gainwell has real upside. If something happened where Antonio Gibson, like McKissick, sure, he's going to get more involved in the offense, of course, but he's never going to have a role where he's getting 12 to 15 carries a game. That's not going to happen. With Gainwell, he immediately goes into a 15-plus touch guy in an offense where you know, they don't have a lot of weapons. So I think he immediately becomes an upside play. Ton of targets going his way. I really like uh, Kenny Gainwell. Alexander Madison, I guess. I mean, Dalvin Cook left this game more time than a fucking alcoholic sitting in the stands. He had his, his knee, his leg, his bike. Like every two seconds, he was limping off the field. Came back, finished the game. Should be fine, but it could be one of those things where the swelling starts the day after, right? Where the adrenaline starts to wear down. He's got the, some ankle thing going on. Uh, I'd imagine Dalvin Cook is feeling like an absolute punching bag today. And we have some good matchups upcoming. I'm not like high on JD, uh, Alexander Madison. I don't think he's that good of a player. So I'm not like too excited to get into my lineups. But I think he's worth owning if Dalvin Cook does end up missing time. He'll probably be limited in practice all week. So you'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. If Dalvin Cook plays, like I'm not getting cute and being like Alexander Madison's got an expanded role. I mean, obviously, because Alexander Madison basically has zero fucking role right now. So him getting on the field is an expanded role. I just thought I'd throw him in there. I mean, if you want to get cute with J.D. McKissick or James White, go for it. I'll pass. You're never going to be able to decipher what days you're going to be uh, be able to actually throw them into your starting lineup. So I don't just I just don't draft pass catching backs to begin with. Those are the running backs for this week on the waiver wire that y'all should be looking at. The real ones are Sony Michelle, Corderell Patterson, and Kenny Gainwell. Again, the full waiver wire in depth Fab guidance article will be up on the website bdge.store by around noon today um and rankings for week three will be live on thursday around noon as well go sign up to be a, a big dog member on the site uh subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the thumbs up button we'll be going live plenty of times this week and for the remainder of the season so make sure you got the notifications on as well i love y'all and i am out of here